say, are we recording? Hi everyone, it's Michelle Gramolia. Uh, it is uh, Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Um, and it's my daily update. As you can see, I am working from home today. We, <laughs> it's been just one thing after another. I feel like I've barely been in the office in the last week, but obviously we got a ton of snow and um, I needed to stay home with the kids and make sure that they're you know, doing what they need to do and removing snow and all that. Uh, so doing double duty. Uh, as always, I'm very thankful for laptops and good Wi-Fi. Um, so where are we? We have so many things going on. Um, I think first what I'd like to do is uh, give you a little bit of feedback from our second round of vaccines that happened with our staff last Friday. So this was the first second round of vaccines that anyone at Woodland Pond uh, on a large scale basis has had. Uh, we vaccinated uh, the, the, the folks that uh, were vaccinated on January 8th through our partnership um, with CVS. So these are our skilled nursing residents and our any staff that were interested in that first round. Um, each of those have now had their second vaccine. And the staff vaccines, as you know, I believe are uh, the Pfizer vaccines. So that's a three week period of between the first dose and the second dose. So on this past Friday, uh, we had approximately uh, 150 people come through our clinic. Uh, that included the skilled nursing residents that needed their second vaccination, any new skilled nursing residents that needed their first vaccination, and a whole bunch of staff members. So a very exciting day. And of course I broadcast from Vaccine Central there on Friday. Um, so a lot of people have wondered, how did the second round go? How did people feel? Um, we saw a lot of minor side effects. So more people reported arm soreness than in the first round. Um, a handful more did report headaches, uh, an, another handful or so, and, and a lot of them were the same people. Um, you know, that reported, if one reported a headache, the same person might report fatigue. Um, and uh, we did actually have one staff member that vomited. Um, but by and large, the results were uh, very good. And all of those uh, symptoms have completely resolved and have done so by Sunday night. So um, a little bit more uh, significant than the first time, but all in all very minor. Uh, no residents had any significant side effects. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're feeling really thrilled about that result. So this basically means that now two weeks from the last Friday, that entire group of people will be deemed to be fully vaccinated for COVID. Um, so that's a great, you know, report for us to be able to make. Uh, we have you know, second round of vaccine clinics coming up for all of the independent living residents that were vaccinated uh, the weekend of Valentine's Day and also the same weekend, uh, the assisted living and garden view residents, as well as any staff that were vaccinated on the 24th will get vaccinated on Valentine's Day as well with their second dose. So we are cooking right along. Um, we did get some industry data uh, and, and some updated information from the CDC that just came out um, and was published in the Associated Press yesterday that indicates that um, the, the number of staff members that are opting to be vaccinated uh, with COVID is very similar to typically the flu uh, vaccine uh, and other optional vaccines that have been seen. And what I'm extremely optimistic about is that uh, what the CDC is, is indicating as see, being seen in the industry is a lot of folks that might have been or are um, a little bit concerned to have the vaccine in the first uh, round that it's available, more and more are adding on as uh, more opportunities come along. So, and we are definitely seeing that at Woodland Pond. So we are um, continuing to educate and um, work with people on being vaccinated. And um, certainly we see this as being, you know, the step to being able to resume congregate activities um, and uh, visitation. Now in the health center, uh, the ability to resume congregate activities, dining, uh, those kinds of things, that's all dictated by New York State. And of course we will communicate that as anything changes. But within independent living, um, you know, with the second round of vaccine happening Valentine's weekend, 
essentially the vast majority of independent living residents and staff will be completely vaccinated by March 1st. So as we go through February, um, you will have seen this in my newsletter article this month. We are you know, in full planning mode to figure out a new calendar um, for starting in March with, you know, now with the underlying baseline that folks are vaccinated. So um, we're getting there and uh, we're really excited. So the next topic, uh, and I actually will be issuing a memo today um, that covers the, all of this information. Um, the next topic that I would just like to talk about is the, um, I wanna just talk about visitation in the health center. So tomorrow, uh, we are going to have achieved all of the criteria that are necessary for us to be able to resume loved ones visits in the health center. Uh, we have not been able to offer these in months because each time we have had a new positive case of COVID in either a resident or a staff member, we have had to, by New York State regulation, put our visits on pause. Um, and you will see in my memo how we stack up to the rest of the industry. Um, just to give you a little bit of a teaser, we, we had an industry call yesterday and each week on Mondays, um, our trade group announces you know, how many folks or how many facilities are able to offer visitation. Um, and as of this past Monday, yesterday, only 6% of skilled nursing facilities or what would traditionally be referred to as nursing homes are currently meeting the criteria to be able to offer visits uh, and only 14% of assisted living facilities are meeting the criteria. So we will be joining a very small group uh, tomorrow. And uh, as we have seen happen in the last uh, 10 months on and off, if we do have any more positive cases, the visits will have to go on pause again. Um, my memo goes into great detail about the process for visitation. So I'm not gonna go into that here. It will be in writing in front of you. It's, it's a, a delineated process of a variety of steps. But just to give you a high level sense of what a visitor would expect. Um, so first and foremost, New York State has set caps on how many folks we can have visiting in a given day um, in the health center. And that's dictated by the number of residents that we have uh, on campus in the health center at that time. It is a 10% cap. So if we have, this is just an example, if we have uh, 30 people in, 30 residents in skilled nursing, then our cap of visitors, including the resident at the visit is three because three is 10% of 30. So we have to apply those caps individually to assisted living and to skilled nursing under the state regulations because those are both uh, separately licensed facilities. Um, so we will schedule those in accordance with those caps. Uh, anyone wishing to schedule a visit, uh, we do offer them seven days a week uh, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, can call our receptionist at 845-256 5910 and um, you know, we really want to take advantage of these visits. So we're hoping to not have any open slots at all. Um, so if you have scheduled a visit or, and would like to be placed on a waiting list to be called if we have a vacant spot to come again, um, please call reception because we really just, we want to see every single visit slot getting used. So important. Um, and we, we're only as good as one day's worth of <laughs> COVID free. So um, we just want to keep those visits going. Uh, we All visitors are required to have a negative COVID test, uh, and one of the things that we are just absolutely so excited about being able to do, um, which is totally different than where we were um, last time we were open for visits, we actually are able to offer rapid testing to the visitors. So we are asking each visitor to arrive 20 minutes before their appointment so that they can complete the screening process and also have a rapid test. Um, if you prefer to have a traditional or a PCR test offsite, you're certainly welcome to do so prior to your visit, but uh, you need to bring proof of your negative test result and the test has to have been taken uh, fewer than seven days prior to your visit. So um, that's certainly an option for you. And all of these things will be explained to you uh, if you, um, you know, call to schedule a visit. The other thing I would mention, and this is also in my memo, 
is our website is really chock full of information related to uh, COVID uh, counts on campus and also um, things to expect during uh, the pandemic here on campus. It's been there. I mean, this information has been on the website for months. We update it uh, whenever it needs updating. There's an extensive description of what to expect back to revisitation, um, including the forms, including our safety plan, um, a whole variety of things. So if you were really interested in, in doing a deep dive as to what the details are, you can find that on our website, which is www.wpatnp.org. Okay, so um, we are, we haven't had any new COVID tests uh, positive in the last couple of days. We did have one a purchasing agent did test positive over the weekend, but she um, does not have contact with any residents and very, very little with staff. She works in our lowest level uh, of the building, um, you know, doing purchasing central supply. She's got her own office. Um, she's, you know, very, very low exposure. So that actually is not something that um, we even are required to report to New York State. But of course, we always um, include things to, uh, all of the numbers uh, go out in our accounts uh, that we present to the public. So you will see that on there. Um, a couple of the other staff members that had tested positive uh, have come off of the list, which is great. Uh, Mary Jo Murray, our wellness RN, continues to feel completely fine and totally asymptomatic. So we're hoping that Mary Jo will be back uh, early next week. She will be able to test again on Sunday um, and with a negative test, she'll be able to come back and you will see her smiling face back on campus. Um, I think just a couple of um, uh, things on campus to just be aware of or think about. Uh, obviously we've got a huge amount of snow again. So this is the second very significant snowstorm of uh, this winter. Uh, these are the two most significant snowstorms that we have had at Woodland Pond uh, since we've opened. And uh, we do appreciate everyone's patience with the snow removal contractors. Um, the storm that we had over the last 36 hours was quite prolonged. I know that here at home, we had to do full snow removal several times over the course of the, the storm. And um, while our snow contractor certainly kept up with the emergency type access uh, access areas, they are now going to be, you know, cleaning everything up, cleaning off the cars, cleaning off your sidewalks, your uh, approaches to your homes, if you're in a cottage, driveways, et cetera. But we certainly need patience. And if you uh, have an appointment and you need to get out, please call concierge. Um, you need to give them a little bit of time. So please don't call now for an appointment at one o'clock. You should call now for an appointment tomorrow at one o'clock so that we know that you need your vehicle. Um, so that's that's snow removal related information. There was something that I included in the Chanticleer yesterday that I really have to reiterate. Um, we have had a few instances where uh, residents have contacted one of our leadership members and indicated that they've got uh, cold symptoms or you know, symptoms of COVID and they want, want to pursue a test um, or their doctor has indicated that they should pursue a test. And, and we can certainly provide instructions for that. But when you do so, we absolutely have to make sure that you notify concierge because you've got to cancel housekeeping and maintenance services if you have them planned. We just cannot have staff members coming into any independent living or health center homes of anyone um, if someone is symptomatic, we must know if you have symptoms so that we can cancel those appointments. Um, it's the fairest thing and it's the safest thing to do for you and for our staff. So please don't forget that step. Um, if you're feeling under the weather, please do call uh, concierge to make sure that we know and we can take you off the housekeeping and maintenance lists. Uh, I think that about covers what I was hoping to go. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one more thing. Um, Christy Battistoni, our director of finance, did ask me to uh, report to all of you that our tax letters from the actuary uh, did come in a little bit early. Uh, so rather than getting them at the end of February this year, you will all get them sometime next week. And for those that are not familiar with what this is, um, maybe if you're a new resident or a uh, you're a little bit foggy on what's happened in the past. Anyone that is a Woodland Pond contract holder, 
So this would be anyone that began their residency at Woodland Pond in independent living. All of you are contract holders, regardless of where you live now. If you started your life at Woodland Pond in independent living, you are a contract holder. And because of that, you um, have a tax benefit for your contractual relationship with Woodland Pond. And each year, our actuaries determine which portion of the payments that you have made to Woodland Pond can be claimed as a potential tax benefit uh, by your tax preparer. So each year you will get from us a letter that's prepared by our actuarial firm and also a statement of all of the payments that you have made to us. And it is absolutely critical that you get those over to your tax preparer as quickly as possible. Um, this can have a positive impact on your tax liability. Um, it's different in every case. So in some cases you may not have a significant amount of tax liability and, and there may not be a tax benefit. But for some of you, um, this can be a significant benefit every year. And uh, we need to make sure that you get those letters in hand. Uh, normally we have, you pick them up at concierge or the business office. Um, and normally it's the end of February, but this year we're, as I said, we're running ahead. So um, we will get notices out to all of you to pick those letters up and please do make sure that they get uh, sent to your tax preparer. If you need assistance with that, um, if they need to be faxed or emailed to your tax preparer, we can certainly take care of that, uh, but we need you to let us know and request for us to do that um, because we do not have tax preparer information for our residents. Uh, you can reach me the rest of the day today on email. I think you all know how to do that and I will be back in the office tomorrow and I will see you all then. Thanks.